Is there any team more confusing than the 2024 Golden State Warriors? I mean, this season has had it all. From game winners... Curry comes free, gets the ball, puts up a three-pointer. ...to game losers... Clark Tech's gonna put one up, Jokic for the win! Ah! Blowout wins to blowout losses, and just when you think the season might be over, they win on a back-to-back -back against the Red Hot Magic and Miami in Miami. All the whilst Draymond Green is unfortunately still doing Draymond Green things. So much so that it brought Steph Curry to literal tears. I promise you that's not an exaggeration. Just look at Steph following the Draymond ejection. But we can't let Draymond's antics distract us from what this road trip was really about. Andrew Wiggins. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Despite all the games missed from key players and the inconsistencies from the likes of Clay and even Steph at times shooting the ball, this team needs Andrew Wiggins to win. We saw that in 2022 and we just saw that on this recent back-to-back -back where Wiggs averaged 20 points across the two games. And it was less about the total points and more about the intensity at which he played with offensively. Just look at his fourth quarter scoring against Orlando. Like on this play with the clock winding down, CP3 tosses a grenade to Wiggs, but he quickly crosses Isaac over before then softly dropping in the floater. Or how about this play, where Wiggs brings the ball up the floor, Looney sets the screen, and watches Wiggs hits Wagner with a filthy in and out before going right at his body and finishing through the contact. There is no one else on the Warriors team that has that combination of speed, strength, and handling. And yes, Jonathan Kaminga will probably be at that level soon, but he doesn't have the same level of ball control that Wiggs has. And this wasn't a one-off performance, because the other night he was just as good. However, before we go any further, let's thank today's sponsor, Game Time. There is nothing better than watching your favorite team win. Well, actually there is one thing better. That's watching your favorite team win up close and in person, which is why I've decided to partner with Game Time, who not only give you the opportunity to watch your favorite team in person, but they do so by giving everyone an opportunity to purchase last minute tickets at the lowest prices. But not only do they give you the lowest prices, Game Time is so confident in their service that they provide you a view of your ticket before you even step foot in the arena. Let's say I wanted to buy tickets to the upcoming Mavericks vs Warriors game. I have the opportunity to look at the viewing angle I get from every available ticket and then determine which I feel would be best for me. So what are you waiting for? Download Game Time today for last minute tickets at the lowest prices. That's a guarantee. Download the Game Time, create an account, and use code Seven Man for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account and redeem code S E V E N M A N for twenty dollars off. Now, getting back to Andrew Wiggins, I mentioned he was just as good against Miami. Well, again, the clear difference was the aggression from the start. Steph kicks it to Wiggs, who has the smaller Rogier guarding him. Instead of settling for a three, he attacks him off the bounce, using his size to get to his spot and just laying it in. Or in this play where Clay sets the screen for Wiggs out top, giving him some extra room, which allows Wiggs to cross over Harkes before absorbing the contact and finishing at the rim. This is a six foot eight forward who can shoot the three ball, hit floaters and hook shots, and most importantly, get to and finish at the rim. There's no reason he should be averaging less than 16 to 17 points a game. Yet that game against Orlando was just his 10th 20 point game of the season. 10 of 63. Now we have to recognize Wiggs has had some personal issues that we aren't fully aware of that could be a reason for his inconsistencies in play. But I'm strictly speaking from what we can see, and that is Wiggs is still just as good as he was two years ago, he just needs to assert himself nightly the way he did against Orlando and Miami. He might also have more space to do that now, because I don't want to speak too soon, but Clay Thompson appears to have regained his form, making the third most threat 
threes of any player in the league over his last 15 games. And most importantly, he's shooting 40% from three in that period of time. And with Clay shooting this well, I just don't see a world in which he can come off the bench at the moment. The only caveat is he still has to spend a significant amount of his time with Trace Jackson Davis. And that's on Steve Kerr to make the minutes work because the chemistry between those two guys has been nothing short phenomenal. And when I say Clay and Trace have a special connection, earlier in the month, Clay equaled his career high assists against New York with eight. Five of those eight assists were to TJD. And the go-to play for Trace and Clay is the down screen, with Trace setting the screen off the ball for Clay, which leaves Trace's man with the decision to press up and prevent Clay's jumper, or drop back and prevent the roll. On this occasion, Achua presses up, and Clay drops a dime to the rolling trace. Or just look at this play, where the Warriors set a double screen out top this time. CP3 with the handoff, and just like on the other play, Achua is more worried about Clay's shooting, which allows Trace to slip back door and look at the dime from Clay. But those weren't even his best passes from that game. How about this one, where Steph is the one setting the screen, and with Hardenstein trying to get in the passing lane, just look at that absolute dime from Clay, just out of Josh Hart's reach. And this partnership isn't just beneficial to TJD. Having a role threat is helping both Clay and CP3. Just look at this play against Memphis, where Clay and TJD run their patented action, and Clay is able to freeze Aldama with the threat of throwing the lob to TJD, having the ability to decide save defenders like this makes up for the athleticism that Clay has lost over the last few years. And look, I know Clay is an all-time great and 34 years old, but you can't tell me he's not passing with a level of confidence that we haven't seen from him potentially ever. And that seems to be most apparent whenever TJD's on the floor. So if the Warriors can find a way to start Clay, but also ensure his minutes are heavily staggered with TJD, I think those long stretches of poor offense can be minimized. And this is what makes the Warriors team so confusing, because you can't seriously watch Andrew Wiggins play like that against an elite defense in Orlando and then think he can't do that on a consistent basis. Then you factor in how Clay and Trace have been operating and the improvements Jonathan Kaminga has made. The makings of a good team are there. The consistency just hasn't been. Now, one guy who has been consistent his entire career is Steph Curry. Now, the last couple of months haven't been his best, but I think we can cut him some slack as a 36-year-old on a team that has been up and down and is still relying on him every single night. Despite that, we all know when it matters most, Steph Curry is going to show up. And we saw that yet again against Orlando. With one minute left in the game and the score separated by three points, Steph is one-on-one -on -one against Franz Wagner. He crosses him over before slipping around the help defense of Banchero. And let's not take this finish for granted. And just to make sure of things, 30 seconds later, with the dubs up by five, Steph finishes off the magic. But don't just take my word for it on Steph Curry being clutch. The stats back it up as well. Just look at his ranks in the clutch this season. Even on nights he's struggling, you know he's going to deliver when it matters most. Now, I'd be lying if I told you I knew what to expect from the Warriors these final 10 games, but I can say if you get a consistent Andrew Wiggins and Clay Thompson alongside Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Jonathan Kaminga, they are still a legitimately good team. 